The Epic Continues was a planned extension of Kenner Star Wars action figure range that was to be released in 1986, with the line featuring updated original characters and vehicles, along with fresh characters drawn from a new plot line created by Kenner's designers. Kid, I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other. I've seen a lot of strange stuff. Many of the new figures and vehicles were inspired by elements from the original trilogy of Star Wars films, and as Kenner developed their ideas, they took shape in the form of concept art and prototypes. Some really exciting toys were being created at Kenner headquarters, but would it be enough to keep the Star Wars toy line alive beyond 1985? Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. In 1984, the Kenner design team, headed up by Mark Boudreau, began brainstorming ideas to keep the Star Wars toy line going hoping to stave off the inevitable dip in popularity due to the lack of any new Star Wars films coming from Lucasfilm. The company had seen early success with their line of mini-rig small vehicles that never actually appeared in the films, but were instead inspired by the look of those movies. These mini-rigs were created to fill a price point gap between the relatively cheap action figures and the more expensive larger vehicles. Kenner's designers often developed ideas for these mini-rigs by kitbashing existing models, and it was during one of these customising sessions that they started developing a new line of figures. The line would feature original characters and vehicles that could exist within the Star Wars universe, and Kenner also formulated a new plot line involving their characters that would continue the Star Wars story after Return of the Jedi. That boy is our last hope. No. There is another. The plot concerned the genetics master, Atha Prime, ruler of the Dark Worlds, who had been freed from exile following the death of Emperor Palpatine. Striking at the Rebel Alliance, Atha Prime was forced to do battle with Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and the Mongo Beefhead tribesmen. Meanwhile, Grand Moff Tarkin, who in this storyline had evaded death at the Battle of Yavin, has returned to take control of the Galactic Empire. Evacuate? In our moment of triumph? Atha Prime, with his army of shock troop clone warriors, moves against the Rebel Alliance, decimating planets in their thrall. They strike from the Annihilator, a city-sized capital ship that attaches to Prime's personal fighter, the Apex Invader. The Annihilator looks like a double-decker Star Destroyer, and while I do enjoy this fresh concept, I doubt it ever would have made it into actual toy form, unless Kenner wanted to repeat the lackluster attempt they made with Darth Vader's Star Destroyer back in 1980. At the same time, the Galactic Empire, headed by Grand Moff Tarkin, makes their own bid for power. To combat this new threat, war hero Han Solo and Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker are called upon, and they are aided in their efforts by the Mongo Beefhead tribesmen of Tatooine. At their disposal are a wide selection of combat vehicles, such as tandem X-Wings and various land speeders. Before proceeding too far with the development of this new line, Kenner needed approval, so they utilised a number of different methods to present their ideas to Lucasfilm Limited. This included black and white sketches, hand coloured drawings, and physical prototypes. Han Solo was redesigned with new, more heroic attire, while Luke Skywalker was given lightweight fencing armour, which was apparently worn by Jedi Knights in training. I would love to have seen what the new, fully produced Luke figure ended up looking like, but alas, it never came to be. It's not true! That's impossible! One of the new hero figures in this plot line was to be the Mongo Beefhead Tribesman and this was one of the few new figure concepts to be actually made into a prototype. The resulting model is very interesting, and features Squidhead's head that is bizarrely turned upside down, Hammerhead's arms, and Forlom's chest armour. In their presentation of Atha Prime, Kenny used a brief description of the character, and a colour concept drawing. The drawing for Prime was in fact slightly modified from designs for the Emperor's Royal Guards from Return of the Jedi, with modifications made to the character's staff and headpiece. While a prototype of Atha Prime was never mocked up, we would eventually see a version of this figure as the design was repurposed in 1998 for the expanded universe Imperial Sentinel from Kenner's Power of the Force 2 line. It's a very cool concept and one that I certainly would have enjoyed back in 1986. How does it feel to enter the all new expanded universe? It's like having the Star Wars comics come alive. Test packages open to reveal a cool 3D play scene. Your Luke Skywalker face the evil clone emperor in a final showdown. Expanded universe 3D placing figures each sold separately. To accompany Prime, Kenner also designed the Clone Warriors, who were very Stormtrooper-esque and featured a red cape draped over one shoulder. While I don't know for certain, 
I'd hazard a guess that one of the reasons Kenner wanted to bring Grand Moff Tarkin into this new plotline is so they could rectify his glaring omission from the original Star Wars waves from 1978 and 1979. Yet for the epic continues, they never went as far as even drawing the character, and instead used a promotional still of Peter Cushing in their Lucasfilm presentation. A variety of droid figures were proposed for the line, including a black Imperial Sentry droid, much like the R5J2 from Return of the Jedi. And if you'd like to add one of these to your collection today, I highly recommend seeking out the Stan Solo version. Three Imperial attack droids designated A, B and C had prototypes made with several elements being kitbashed from earlier figures, such as Zuckus and 21B. The pilot droid Blue 4 was also designed as part of Atha Prime's faction, and was the intended pilot of Atha Prime's Apex Invader starship. For new vehicles to go with the line, Kenner developed a number of prototypes and designs, inspired by crafts seen in the original trilogy of Star Wars films. And for me, these are the most exciting possibilities that Kenner worked on. Mark Boudreau customised the tandem X-Wing, inspired by lumbering World War II airplanes. The ship was painted in negative colours to those of the standard X-Wing, despite Boudreau's admission that there was no need for a night fighter in space. To accompany the ubiquitous Millennium Falcon toy that had been produced years earlier, a Millennium Falcon cargo handler was designed, which could be attached to the nose of the original toy. What a piece of junk! This would have made for a wonderful lower price point vehicle that Han Solo could use for scouting a planet while the Falcon was in a space dock for repairs or refueling. This was an ingenious concept and one that would have brought an extra level of play value to the already enjoyable Millennium Falcon toy. For land vehicles, the designers formulated two land speeders, the XP-36 and the XP-38. The former was intended to be a high performance light vehicle, while the latter was a state of the art speeder. A prototype was made of the XP-36 by kitbashing the original land speeder toy while the XP-38 existed only as concept art. The XP-38 would also serve as Luke Skywalker's personal vehicle within the storyline. Another craft inspired by the films was a variation of the airspeeder, modified for use on desert worlds. One all-new nearly produced toy was the Scout and Retrieval Vehicle, which could carry damaged X-Wings and airspeeders. This was a type of rebel tank that could carry multiple action figures and an earlier version of the toy had been proposed years earlier as an unseen vehicle used by the Rebels on Hoth. Yet Kenner's new version was presented two ways, as a slightly modified version of the original toy's prototype, and as a heavily modified version presented as concept art. The all-terrain armoured transport was easily the best Imperial vehicle from the original line, and Kenner had plans to give us a variation of this for the epic continues. Working from the original model, an all-terrain ion cannon prototype was made. The design consisted of an ATAT with its back and top sheared off, and a large cannon, which looks very similar to the one that came with the Death Star playset, was mounted on the rear. A single playset, dubbed the Imperial Outpost, was conceived for the new line. The concept art was designed by Mark Boudreau, who combined pre-existing elements, such as the gun tower from the Death Star, and the landing platform and bunker complex seen on Endor in Return of the Jedi. The T-16 Skyhopper, a model of which is seen being flown around in Luke's hand in the original film, was also included in the presentation in the form of Joe Johnston's original concept art, and this was eventually made into a toy in 1996 as part of the Power of the Force 2 line. In addition to the reintroduction of Tarkin, Kenner also proposed a Bantha toy, which they had considered producing for the original line. Unlike Tarkin, the Bantha was presented as concept art, and it's likely that this creature was intended to complement the Mongo Beefhead tribesmen, since they were both native to Tatooine. If you'd like to add a Bantha to your collection, I yet again recommend seeking out the Stan Solo version. Another glaring omission that appeared in both Star Wars and Return of the Jedi, but never made it into toy form, was the Tantive IV. Also known as the Rebel Blockade Runner, this is the first starship we ever saw in Star Wars, as it unsuccessfully tried to escape the clutches of an Imperial Star Destroyer with Princess Leia aboard in the opening scene of the 1977 film. Commander, tear this ship apart until you found those plans and bring me the passengers. I want them alive! The Tantive IV is the most intriguing of all of these unreleased concepts because it did actually make it into the film and because Kenner got a lot further along with the development of the concept model. This was because Kenner had actually designed the toy in 1983 for the Return of the Jedi line, but for reasons unknown, it never became a reality. So when the designers were fleshing out concepts for the Epic Continues in 1984, they dusted off the mothballs and included a mock-up of the Rebel Blockade Runner in their Lucasfilm presentation. 
It's a real shame we never received this toy in either 1983 or 1986, especially when you consider that we've never received an action figure version of this toy in the 40 years since the Blockade Runner was first conceived. Sure, Kenner did offer a version in 1996 as part of their Collector Fleet line, but that was more of a display model than a toy, and it couldn't accommodate action figures, and Hasbro have only managed to summon up half of the ship's corridor. So when I read all the play features that Kenner had planned for the original version, such as an opening cockpit, an escape pod, and battery-operated cannons and lights, I really feel like we were cheated out of what could have been a truly epic vintage Star Wars toy. Do or do not. There is no try. With all of these prototype photos and pieces of concept art compiled into a portfolio, Kenner presented their ideas to Lucasfilm. The presentation also included proposals for figures from the existing films and the two animated television shows, Droids and Ewoks. And it is possible that Kenner also intended to have their new plotline accompanied by a third animated series. While Lucasfilm was pleased with the fact that the toy company had gone through so much effort, they were not ready to pursue coordinated efforts to flesh out the Star Wars galaxy beyond the films. And likely due to the Power of the Force line's poor showing at retail in 1985, Kenner's Star Wars toy line would finally come to an end due to lack of interest. But how do you feel about it? Would you have collected the Epic Continues toys back in your childhood in 1986? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Mm.